So let's, <clears throat> so let's try to record with the porch light and see if that gives me a higher resolution on my because uh, it if I try to go out there in a natural light it records in like 720 which looks grainy on YouTube um, oh, my coffee's hot well a new coffee pot today my other coffee pot sound like an electric fence going off this morning my face is itching I shaved today and shaved with a real razor instead of just a clippers and it feels itchy um, I got a little sun on my face day around uh, 9.8 miles, 9.58 pace, and, or 8.58 pace. I wasn't trying to run fast, and uh, my pace has sucked this year compared to last year, but uh, I'll take an 8.58, and hopefully I can do that for 26 miles next Sunday. Um, anyway, uh, I didn't have milk, so I'm drinking my coffee black, and it's hot, hot. Mm. Uh, it's not bad. Uh, Maxwell House, in case you're wondering. Um, I wanted to drink Folgers. My grandmother was a Folgers drinker, and uh, I kind of felt like a, a uh, like I should drink Folgers, and because she was my favorite person on the planet, um, really good person. But uh, I try, and Folgers just don't do it for me. My grandma was a uh, wrestling fan. It's a little story that uh, I recently remembered. Um, nobody knew it. I don't think anybody in the family knew it. She would. Uh, on the Sunday morning, she would get up and uh, watch wrestling, WWE, and uh, she once took me to a wrestling match in our at our high school. That um, actually, I got to help set up the ring and got free admission. Grandma took me up there and, and uh, we watched the wrestling. Got to see Leaping Lonnie Poffo, who would, who was Randy Savage's uh, little brother, and uh, Leaping Lonnie would stand up on the turnbuckle and read a poem that he written off a po off a frisbee and throw it to the crowd. And do a front flip off the off the uh, turnbuckle, which was really cool. Um, and uh, Captain Lou was there. This is 1978, mind you. Captain Lou wasn't famous with uh, Cindy Lauper yet. And uh, the Yukon Lumberjacks and the Iron Sheik and Dusty Rhodes was the headliner then. I don't think Hulk Hogan was a big deal at the time. I mean, he probably was, you know, back when they were wrestling in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, every week. But uh, maybe on TV, even. But. Uh, you know, he wasn't he wasn't Dusty Rhodes, who'd probably been wrestling forever. Anyway, that was my grandma's little funny little story that nobody knew about my grandma. Um, she was a small, probably you know, five foot two Irish lady. Her last name was Browning, and you know, the Irish just could be quiet until you made her mad. Grew up in garden, knitted, worked her ass off till you know she got Alzheimer's and couldn't work. But Quilted. Her arthritis was really bad. Fingers all knotted up. She still quilted and sold quilts for money to give to the Mountain Mission. Took stuff to the Mountain Missions. Went flew to Africa. Flew to South America. Helped them build houses. Uh, she was a very. She was a saint. Um, Love my grandma. I am very pro alternative transportation. Um, I'm interested in electric motorcycles to build one yourself that you could to. You know, drive to work if you have a short commute or live in the city or something that you could charge off of somebody else's dime. Um, I don't believe electric vehicles are the future of the transportation world. Uh, I mean, you're to, until we have a better means to create power plants other than coal, nukes, or natural gas, electric just you know you're just putting off another source of fuel. Where at least uh, gas is a gas or diesel is its own fuel source. Um, I wish we would not do business with Saudi Arabia, but uh, apparently that is. Um, I'm very much into bicycling, running, whatever. To you know, to, if you can eliminate your need to put a carbon footprint on the planet, I don't see why you should. Just even, no matter where you stand on global warming. But anyway, uh, that's my vlog for tonight, and. Uh, I think I had a point. I think it was like one of the things where you, I run today, and while I was running, I had this. I was like one of the things where you, you know, turn 52. I'm like that close, you know, 10 years away from being 62, and you're like, got to figure out what you want to do with your life. You know, you don't figure that stuff out when you're 52. But you know, when I got a job when I was a kid, you know, you don't know. You don't think about those things. You just get a job. You don't think about you know, going and help break down the wall. 1982, you know, I would have called like to screw it, I ain't getting a job, I'm going to Germany and knock down the Berlin Wall and then go from there. That's what you should do when you're 17 years old. But 
trying to figure it out when you're 52 and you're 10 years away from retirement, 12 years away from retirement, and it's not cool. But I got to I, you know, I figure out what I want to do. Uh, that's pretty anticlimactic, wasn't it?